Good day everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Cliff. I'm a gem cutter from Australia and welcome to today's video where you see me facet a piece of light blue topaz. Now this piece of topaz began its life as a natural clear piece of gem found in Nigeria. However, this gem has been irradiated and irradiation is the process in which a gem is irradiated in order to enhance its optical properties. So to do this, high levels of ionizing radiation changes the atomic structure of the gem's crystal lattice. As a result, the gemstone's color may be significantly altered or the visibility of its inclusions may be lessened. When a gem has been irradiated or heat treated, it often increases the value of the gem, both in its natural state or when it's been faceted. As a recreational gem cutter, I don't mind faceting either irradiated or heat treated gems or natural gems, but there are a select group of gem cutters who will only facet a natural gem that hasn't been treated in any way. The only thing I've found with the process of irradiation or heat treatment that in certain varieties of gems it changes the crystalline structure of the gem where it makes it brittle and quartz is a really good example of this that natural quartz in my opinion facets a lot better than irradiated or heat treated type of quartz that's been colorized. I usually find the quartz that has been treated in some way becomes a lot more brittle and chippier. Now normally when I start cutting a gem I usually preform the gem on my faceting machine or at my gem club however in this case I've decided not to where I've just marked out the outline of the shape and the center of where I'm going to glue my dop stick to and I've also highlighted where there is an inclusion where the cross is and also where the cleavage plane is on the topaz. So topaz has a cleavage plane and that's the direction of the cleavage plane where the arrow is pointing at. Now I could probably do a preform and grind it up to the shape but in this case I don't think there is any point because I do need to remove an inclusion where that cross is and it gives me an idea of where the cleavage plane is if I mark it and often you don't need to preform you can just glue the dot directly onto the gem if you know what type of shape now this particular piece of topaz lends itself to a trillion shape of a gem so I'm not going to go through the whole process of preforming the gemstone now I've got to mention to most of my subscribers and viewers who are regulars that with this particular video the outcome of this gem turns out totally different than what I intended at the beginning so for those people who just want to fast forward to the final reveal and just check out what the gem looks like once cut well so be it but for those hardcore gem cutters who want to learn something stick with me through this video because I learnt a lot and I think you will learn a lot also now my intended design was going to be the all-seeing eye which was designed by John Bailey now John in his own right is a really good gem cutter and a really good gem designer I rate him very highly among the best of the best gem designers out there people like Jeff Graham or Bob Keller now John has created many wonderful designs I've cut several of his designs already so this is a design I've always wanted to facet and it really looks great as I do like faceting eye designs and here is a computerized generated GIF of what the design looks like cut. Now it seems to me that John got his inspiration for this design from the $1 bill which features the Eye of Providence but I'm going to change up his design just a little bit to suit the refractive index of Topaz. So I've just tweaked the design a little bit where the crown remains the same but the pavilion angles are not quite as deep because I don't want to waste as much material and I really only need to cut the pavilion angles at about 39 degrees which saves a lot of waste of material and I've excluded the eye on the base of the pavilion also. So not a lot has changed within the design and thank you to John for giving me this design to work on. 
Anyway, let's get started on this project and we'll start cutting the gem. So I've just done a quick rough out of the P1 pavilion facets. So having done a quick rough out on a fairly coarse 600 grit diamond topper lap, I'm going to go to a very worn 800 grit diamond topper lap. Now that's a good thing with these topper laps or any lap. Once they get worn, you can still use them. So eventually they become almost like a pre-polishing type of lap. So as you can see now the facets look a lot crisper and cleaner after I've gone over the original facets with the 800 grit diamond topper lap. If you look closely in the gem what appears to be an inclusion is in fact the cleavage plane and because the gem has been irradiated it starts to stand out and one thing you want to avoid when you're cutting you want to avoid cutting directly on the same angle as the cleavage plane now that's not going to happen I could actually see it within the gem uh, before I actually put the gem on the dock and you can see it near my thumb right now there it is So I've been faceting the girdle outline and what I like to do from time to time is use a sharpie pen and highlight the outline of the girdle particularly if you have other facets that need to hit a specific meet point and I find this really does help out a lot.
So here you can see where I've cut six facets on the girdle outline and you can see how the aid of the Sharpie pen is really showing me what I'm cutting and you can see that these facets are coming into a meet point. So I'm building up really good facets on the pavilion, getting really good meet points. So next stage will be to polish the gem and then I'll move on to cutting the crown. So I'm ready to start polishing the facets as a final polish on the pavilion and I'm using one drop of sewing machine oil and I'm using a 50,000 grit diamond compound on a tin lamp. The diamond compound is a De Beers brand and I usually find De Beers to be a very good quality product. Now I would suggest for anyone who is a beginner faceter that you cut and polish topaz as your first gem. It will save you, in my opinion, a lot of heartache compared to cutting quartz. Quartz is a lot more difficult to polish and more often than not the first gem that most people are taught to facet will be quartz because it's relatively cheap but I would say to those people if you're cutting a gem for your first or second time try out topaz learn how to cut that polishing will be a breeze So I'm ready to facet the crown, so I'm doing the secondary transfer. Normally I just use a transfer jig, but you'll notice that I'm using a transfer jig and an alignment block within the jig. And I like these alignment blocks because you get a lot more accurate transfer. I've found with factory transfer jigs that they often can pull the dock to one side, left or right when you're making the secondary transfer. So this means when you insert the dot within the quill, you will need to either cheat left or right, and that will have to be for the entire crown. So these alignment blocks eliminate all those issues. So even if you don't have any of these alignment blocks and you're just simply using the transfer jig, you will need to remove the dop stick and this is how I like to do it. It's a very simple process, you've got to be quick. I don't wrap any paper tissue that's wet or moist around the gem. I hold the gem in my fingers and it should pop off really quickly. So I felt no heat transfer whilst removing the dot from the gem, nor should you because once heat transfers into the gem, it will transfer into the base of the dot stick where it's glued and that will compromise the glue by creating flex. So now it's simply time to realign the alignment block back onto the base plate of the faceting machine and that's simply done by inserting it into the quill and then lowering it so the actual dop is not tightened into the quill it's still free spinning so once it's aligned to the master lap that's when I start tightening up the nut on the quill and then I'll remove the alignment block
So here you'll see that I'm faceting the crown, what we call the C1 facets, and then I cut the C2 facets. They form the girdle outline on the crown, and that's all going well. And this is where the problem starts to arise in this gem. And I kind of thought it would before I even cut the gem. I knew I had to squeeze in a lot of these C3 crown facets to meet these barium type of facets on the crown and I just can't squeeze them in, particularly the middle ones. So things start to really belly up. So here's a close up of the gem and I've got three options how I will fix this. One is to recut the gem, which means that the gem will be a lot smaller. The second option is be bold, start improvising on the crown, make things up as I go along. And the third option is to polish the remaining facets and just see what happens and cut the table. Now I've decided to take option two, be bold and start improvising and just see what the outcome is. So I have an idea of what I'm going to do. So the first thing I do is, as you can see, I've polished in the corner facets and then I'm going to attempt something I've never done before and that's start to convex the crown. So to convex this crown or to cab this crown, I'm going to lower the angle of my protractor because I've basically got to grind out certain section of the facets that are not working for me. And I'm going to mark that out here just to give you an idea of what section I want to get rid of. So I've lowered the protractor angle, I've got the index wheel free spinning and I'm gently going to round out those existing facets that I don't want anymore. So I've done an initial grind and so far it's going well, but I still have a few little patches that I need to grind out. So I will need to make little tweaks on the height and on the protractor. And particularly in this corner area, that needs to be gently cut away. So the first step of this modification is complete and it went really well. It was almost like a surgical operation that I didn't overcut, particularly in the corners. So a little bit of tweaking with the protractor and the height adjuster got the job done. So the next step is for me to polish around the surface. Now I've never done this, so this is purely experimental from my point of view. But in essence what I'm trying to do is actually cab the actual gem and that's usually done on other machines. So to polish this crown what I've done is created a diamond slurry on my tin lap using a lot more 50,000 grit diamond than I normally would and now I'm just getting it nice and wet and just spreading that diamond on the lap. I've changed the protractor angle so that I'm going to start polishing from the point of the crown and work my way into the base towards that girdle outline. So just take my time free spinning and we'll see what happens.
so various sections of the crown are not polishing out so rather than just continually keep spinning around on one spot I've highlighted those sections with a sharpie highlighter pen and rather than spin around I'm just moving side to side on those areas making little height adjustments as I go along and you can see that I've just done that now So most of the crown has been polished except one section leading into the corner and I'm getting this white patch which you will often get on flat surfaces on large facets. That has to be removed and I'll make very minor tweaks to get rid of that patch. So to remove this little patch I'm having trouble with, I've raised the height adjuster. I'm going to add more of the oil just to make more of a slurry, rub it in and I'm going to start from the top of that patch and I've made a little adjustment by about one tenth of a degree on my protractor and I'm just going to work my way down into that corner just making little twirls and just lowering gently as I polish through that dusty section of the crown So the entire surface of the crown is now polished and the convex section is complete with no dusty patches. That actually worked out really well. I was surprised as I've never tried this before. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone do it on a fastening machine. So this leaves a lot of options available for different designs in the future. So on to the next section. In the next scene to complete the gem I've cut in and polished 48 micro facets at increments of two indexes on the 96 index wheel and it's formed a triangular shape with rounded corners. Now I haven't shown you how to do this all, if I did I'd probably overcut many of these facets. But the moral of this story is that a man's got to know his limitations. Because this was a complex design by John Bailey, in hindsight I should have really done a test cut on a relatively inexpensive piece of gem and made it a lot bigger. I think I know where I've gone wrong. Um, I think I've cut too deeply on one of the corners or maybe a gremlin got in the works.